Hello everyone and welcome to another video tutorial. Today we're gonna talk all about error handling in Node.js and TypeScript using the popular framework Express.js. So let's get started. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of error handling in JavaScript in general, or you don't know what an error is or what an error handling means, I recommend that you check out my other tutorial on error handling in JavaScript first, and then you can come back to this tutorial and learn error handling uh, in Node.js and TypeScript. So you can see in front of me, I have a boilerplate for uh, Node.js application running with TypeScript. I have already configured TypeScript with uh, Node.js and already installed the required dependencies and dev dependencies. So let's go through the entire code base and see what kind of errors we have. Before we, go, we do that, I want to uh, tell you that all, all the code that I will write in this video will be available on my GitHub repository. Uh, so make sure to check out the description box. You can see the link to my GitHub repository. So you can fork it, you can uh, play with it and keep it as a reference for you in the future when you want to apply error handling logic in your applications. Um, you can see that my application is running on port 3000 and also I have uh, some some functions or request handlers or controllers or whatever you want to call them. So I have these um, request handlers, okay, HTTP sign up, sign in and sign out. And inside these, I have already thrown some errors. For example, here, sorry, you are not available. And here, sign in error, here, sign up error. And also in the index.ts, you can see that app.all, app.all means that um, all the HTTP methods, uh, for example, uh, post, delete, put, patch, get, whatever it is, all these methods will be uh, handled by this uh, request handler on this route. This route is star. Star means anything else, anything not sign sign up or sign in or sign out. Anything else will be handled uh, by this uh, request handler. So uh, I forgot to here to throw a new error. Okay. So anyway, when we throw errors inside our application, inside our uh, request handlers. All these errors are handled inside something called a middleware. So what is a middleware? Uh, in order to understand middlewares, I want to show you some diagram. Okay, you can see in front of me, I have uh, here a, a web browser or web client in dark mode, <laughs> because I know most of you don't like light mode. So in light mode, I have, uh, sorry, in dark mode, I have a web browser that goes to localhost 3000 and probably here 3000 sign up. Okay, so I go to HTTP localhost 3000 sign up and this will go uh, in itself to this request handler which is HTTP sign up. If you remember, HTTP sign up is the same as this request handler. So when we send this request, uh, the request goes to this request handler and the request handler will apply some logic and after it applies its own logic, it will uh, respond with uh, this response object and this response object reaches its destination which is the client or the web browser and middlewares middlewares are just interceptors they are called middlewares because they stand in the middle between uh, our client and between our request handlers so whenever we send this uh, request object the request first will be handled by this middleware and this middleware can apply some logic to this request and after that, it will pass it to the second middleware and so on and so on until finally it reaches the end of the chain, which is the request handler uh, HTTP sign up in our case. And after this uh, request handler sign up apl applies its own logic to the request, it sends a response. So this response will go to the middleware two and then middleware one. And uh, these in turn can uh, apply their own logic on this response object. Uh, until finally this response reaches by the end to the web client, which is the web browser in this case. So that's basically what a middleware is. Now, if we go back to the code base, okay, uh, in our code base, we defined an error handler middleware, okay, 
An error handling middleware is just a function. Okay, any middleware, not just error handling middlewares, any middleware is just a function that has a uh, few parameters. But specifically, when we talk about error handling middlewares, we must define four parameters. And these parameters are error, which is the error that is being thrown, and request, which is the request that we need to intercept if we want to intercept, and then the response, and then next. Next is just um, a function that calls the second middleware in the chain. If you remember, if we have different middlewares, one after another, we call next in order to uh, go to the second middleware. So uh, that's next. And if we want to apply this error handling middleware inside our application, we need to pass it to this app.use method. Uh, app.use is used to pass middlewares uh, to it. So basically, we define app.use error handler or error handler middleware, and we put it at the end of the application, not in the beginning, because um, if we put this, for example, here, uh, if any uh, if any error happened inside any of these functions, the error handler will not work. This error handler must be defined uh, at the end of the application. So we need to write it uh, as close as possible to the end of, uh, of the file. So basically, if we want to handle errors in Node.js, we simply apply some error handling logic inside this middleware. Okay, for example, let's, for now, let's see console log error dot, dot name and console log error dot message. Okay, so if I go to here, okay, and go to localhost, 3000 and go to sign up you can see the error is logged first we see the name of the error which is error and then we see sign up error and if I go to sign in the same thing and same thing for sign out you see and finally if I go to something that it doesn't exist it will be handled by this request handler. Okay, catch me if you can. So let's stop this. That's it for error handling in Node.js for synchronous code. If you rem if you see that in all our controllers or uh, in all our request handlers, they are all synchronous code. But in real life scenarios, we don't have synchronous code that much when we when it comes to error uh, when it comes to request handlers because we uh, usually talk to database or we call another API or something like that. So uh, if I add async, for example, ah oh, sorry, not here, <laughs> async function. Okay, and now let's go to localhost. Sign up. So basically, we are mimicking the scenario of creating a user inside the database, uh, and it's asynchronous method, a function, and we need to await it in some way. So let's go to sign up. Ah, uh, you see the application crashed. It says the application crashed, and there is a very bad experience for our uh, user. So we need to find a way to uh, fix this error. The problem is that our error is not being handled and instead it crashes our application. So the reason is whenever we throw errors inside async functions, uh, we, we can't throw it like this. We need to use another way, which is, I want to define the uh, parameters here, which are regres next. Okay, we have some errors, errors from TypeScript because I want to say that this comes from request, from express and here as a response from express and also here it's next function. Okay, so now instead of throwing the error, I need to call next.
That's how you handle asynchronous errors inside uh, Express.js. You define the next function. So let's try now. Sign up. Yeah, it already logged. You can see error sign up. So we handled the error correctly. Now let's see some of the problems that we have inside our code base. The first problem that we have is that when we throw errors, there is no way that we can differentiate between different types of errors. We have a very general word here. It's just error. Okay, we can't know the, the cause of the error. Maybe the error is caused because of the uh, database crashed or maybe because authentication error or maybe because um, a page, is, a page not found or something like that. So uh, that's, that's a good problem. And also if we go to the error handler middleware, and here, instead of logging the error, I want to return something because remember that we are dealing with front-end engineers and all the errors that we are handling will be sent to the, um, to the front-end engineer. So we need to return something. I want to return res.status. And then JSON. Uh, return an object as JSON, which is message error dot message so you can see now that yeah i i receive an error uh, as a, as a as this uh, a json object message sign up error but the problem is we are hard coding the value in the rest dot status um, for example let's suppose that the error happened because unauthorized uh, unauthorized operation and in that case we need to write uh, 401 and if we have for example um, a database error we need to return 500 if we have page not found we need to return 404 so there are different status codes that we need to need to return so this value must be cust uh, must be able to be customized right and also the message that we are sending here okay uh, the message that we are sending in this case it's very simple error.message message is just a string um, so it's very simple in nature but sometimes the error that we are receiving is complex in nature and it has um, maybe it has a property and that property has uh, an array of objects and inside these objects we have other objects so we need to format or uh, customize this uh, error object that we have in order to extract useful information from it and return it to the front end. Maybe we don't need to return the entire uh, error object. So we need to find ways to solve these complex problems because we are writing code that is scalable. Okay, so let's see how we can so solve this problem. Um, the first thing I, I'd like to see is inside my controllers, instead of writing throw new error, I want to write, instead of just the general word error, I want to return or throw, for example here, authentication error. And here maybe instead of general word, I need to return database error. And maybe here it's bad request error. So all these classes that we have defined here are not, uh, are not true classes. We need to uh, first create them. So in order to create them, let's create a folder inside the source directory. I want to call it errors and inside it I want to create a file called databaseerror.ts and inside here I want to export a class called database error and it extends the built-in error constructor and I want to call the constructor function and inside it called super And I want to add a magical line. Now, I know that this magical line seems very weird, but if you are curious enough to understand what is going on behind the scenes and what this magical line does, uh, I will link to a resource in the description box to a Stack Overflow uh, post so you can read and understand for yourself. But for ourselves, we need to write set uh, object dot set prototype of this to be database error dot prototype 
Again, if you want to learn what this line does behind the scenes, you can go to that Stack Overflow discussion and see for yourself. So anyway, I defined this uh, error here. Anyway, I defined this custom error class, which is a database error. And I want, to, I want to come back and import it. And you can see that we are not sending any message. So I simply can remove this because in database error, when we instantiate the, the uh, class, like in this case, new database, whenever we instantiate any class in JavaScript or TypeScript, the constructor method will be called. So if you don't pass anything, any parameter to the, the constructor, then you cannot uh, pass any string here, for example. Oh, okay, TypeScript would say it's an error. So anyway, if we go and define this one as well, authentication error, Sorry, not here. In the errors. .ts. And I'm going to copy paste everything just to save some time. Authentication error. Okay, I can import it now. Also, I don't need to pass anything. And then the bad request, the bad request is also not defined yet. So we need to create this file, which is bad request.ts. And here I want to copy paste everything. And no, not here. If I go back to here, I want to copy this one. Yeah, I know I'm too lazy. So yeah, what is left is to import it. Now in this case, we are also receiving errors because we are passing a string to the constructor, but I don't want to remove this string. I want to really pass it. So I need to go back to the bad request error constructor. And here I type public message has to be a string okay and this message uh, I, I want also to pass this message to the error constructor for logging purposes okay just for logging purposes when we log the errors inside the terminal we need to see this message and let me do the same thing for other uh, errors here but I don't want to pass a message I simply want to define a, a hard-coded string which is in user unauthenticated for example okay and what else we have the bad requests no we have database okay database error i also want to pass a string to the error which is database crashed try again later So remember the super class, uh, sorry, the super method calls the error class and pass it this string. So uh, now let's see if I go back to my error handler middleware. If you remember, we did all of this refactoring just in order to differentiate between the different types of error that we have inside our application. And so far we have three different types of errors. So let's see if we can differentiate between them. If we write if error instance of database error. So if this error was an instance of the database error class, I want to return Okay, I want to return, not for 404, I want to return 500. And here I want to return different message, which is uh, database error. And let's see also for authentication error. A 
And the same thing for finally bad request error. Here I want to say authentication. And here it's bad bad request. Okay, so the problem solved. The problem is we can now differentiate between uh, between different uh, types of errors that we have inside our application. But now we have a different problem, which is uh, our code is is not dry. We are repeating ourselves. Imagine that we have uh, 20 types of errors. So for every type of error, we need to define a different uh, check and change the code and change the message. So it doesn't make sense to, to act like that. Uh, another problem we have, not just uh, not just that we are doing repetitive code. Second problem is uh, inconsistency. Now, any any time a developer can come and write, for example, he defines uh, some fun some uh, file here. It's called not found error and wrote error not found error here. Not found error. I know it, it doesn't exist yet, but let's assume that it exists. And instead of passing 404, the developer passes 4004. So it happens. And also maybe instead of message, the developer writes MSG and writes something not found. Or maybe instead of passing um, a string, maybe passes something else like an array or something. Okay, I can pass an array and um, there is no error. TypeScript is not complaining about that. So we need to find a way to make our code consistent and also to make our code expected. Because remember, we are dealing with front-end engineers and we don't need to cause any headaches to front-end engineers by sending different properties and uh, different content inside here. I, if I want to return a property called message and in this uh, in this error it's a string, I want to always return a string. And if I decided to change my mind and return a, uh, an array, for example, I want TypeScript to tell me, yeah, you are doing something wrong. And also for uh, the status codes, I don't want to uh, hard code everything. I need to, to find some way in order to write it uh, somewhere. I will show you now where, and this will be populated um, by default uh, anytime we, we see that this is a bad request error or this is an authentication error. So to do that, let's remove this code. To do that, I want to go to database error and here I can simply write status code equals, in this case, what is it? 500. And in bad request, it's 400. And in authentication error, it's um, 401. Okay, and now I can simply go to back to my middleware. And instead of hard coding these values, I can write error.status code. Okay, so we solved half of the problem, but still we are repeating ourselves. So let's see how to handle this thing. Uh, in order to show you the, the solution, I want to show you some diagram in order to th make things more clear. So far, if you remember, all these custom errors, database error, bad request, authentication, or whatever, they are all, okay, all these errors are extending the built-in error constructor. And after that, we go to the middleware, and in the middleware, we handle these errors uh, by checking if the error that we receive is of this type, or this type, or this type. So that's why we are repeating ourselves. The solution that I'm going to implement is going to look like this. All the custom errors that we are defining in our application, instead of making them extend the built-in error class, I want to create a custom error class, which is called also as abstract class. And this abstract class will extend this error and this custom error will be extended by all of these errors here, authentication, bad request, or whatever. 
And after that, in the middleware, instead of checking any error is coming from database or uh, authentication or bad request, I want to check if the error is an instance of this custom class. So this custom class is called in the world of software development, it's called uh, an abstract class. Uh, an abstract class is simply a class that, um, that cannot be instantiated first. So we cannot co call throw new custom error. Uh, an abstract class cannot be instantiated. And also an abstract class acts as a blueprint for all these classes. Okay, it acts in a bl blueprint. And it tells all these classes that extend it that they must com comply to some format or to some blueprint. Okay, I will show you now. Instead of just talking, I want to show you inside coding. If I go back here to... Okay, I want to create um, a util, a folder called utils. And inside it, I want to create custom custom error dot ts and here I want to define uh, export abstract class called custom error and in itself it extends the built-in error constructor and then call the constructor method and then call the super the super me method will be passing uh, some message to the error so i want to define public message as a string and here i want to pass the message okay what else so um i want also to create status code and this status code, or let's say it's status code, capital. I know it's not the normal way of defining things, but I'm writing it for a reason. And I want to mark it as an abstract property. And also I want to define an abstract method, which is called um, serialize, which is a method that returns an object of message and that message is a string okay now let's make all our errors extend this custom error so here instead of uh, extending the error built-in class I want to, ex to extend the uh, custom error the abstract class so I want to import it you can see immediately that I have some errors. The error says that non-abstract class does not implement all the abstract members of custom error. Remember, in, in custom error, we defined status code, but here it is status code with lowercase s. So I want to change that. And also I want to define some method, which was called serialize. And it has to return a message of unauthenticated user, for example. It has to be a string, whatever string it is. Okay, and now you can see that TypeScript is no longer complaining about this. And if I decided to change my mind and write, for example, serialize error, TypeScript will go crazy and will tell us that there is an error. And the error is because we are writing the wrong name. So that's how you uh, extend uh, an abstract class. Let's apply the same thing for bad request. Custom error. And here, change it to S capitalized and define some serialized method. And this serialized method returns an object of message. Uh, this dot message okay remember this dot message is this one and it is a string so we are good to go and whenever we define something else we get an error so let's go back to database error finally and do the same thing here it's 
is capitalized and finally we have what method it is serialize i forgot and return a message of string and i want to return this same one okay and in the middleware we can see a bunch of errors um, because it detects that there should be another name so now what kind of problem we solved by defining this uh, this uh, what it is custom error abstract class what kind of problem we solved by creating this the problem that we solved is now we no longer need to uh, worry about what kind of json i want to return i no longer need to worry about what kind of uh, status code i want to define and for any reason if i decided to write here um, status code d for example typescript will say that there is an error so i need I, I no longer need to worry about what kind of status code i want to to pass and my code is if you can see my code is consistent status code status code status code and here also instead of returning this i want to return error dot serialize and i can copy paste this here and here and you can see how consistent our code is error the status code it's written all the time and if any developer decide to change his mind and defy uh, let's suppose creating uh, okay i want to copy paste this quickly if some developer working on our code base decided to define not found error for example not found error and if you change his mind and instead of writing status code with capitalized s and writes s lowercase typescript will throw an error if he decides that instead of serialize i want to say it's format or reformat or whatever typescript will say an error serialize basically means the same thing as format um, but we we decided to call it serialize not format uh, we call it serialize because uh, as I told you before, our our error that we are receiving uh, might not be a simple uh, a simple string um, or a simple object. It might be uh, an array of objects, and inside this array we have different objects, and different objects have different properties, and these properties have arrays. It's possible that we receive errors like that, so we don't need to um, to assume that the error that we have is simple and simply return it we need to define a method like serialize and this serialize uh, returns the the implementation of it, it is different from fun to from class to class maybe the database error receives a very basic error like this maybe the not found is simple but when it comes to authentication the error that we receive when we throw an authentication error Maybe that error is complicated and we need to serialize it or reformat it in some way and send it back to the client. So if any developer comes and defines a new, uh, new error, a new custom error, and writes something that is not consistent with our code base, TypeScript will complain and say this is an error. So we solve the problem of inconsistency. And now the second problem that we have is not dry code or repetitive code so basically we can remove all of this now let's test our application if i go to postman let's start with sign up you see it's 500 and the error message is being logged and the sign in the same thing it's 401 unauthorized sign out in sign out i get this message with bad request 400 so our code is running so the last thing that we are left with if we are if we go to something that doesn't exist if you remember yeah the postman is hanging i will show you later why 
if I go to index.ts, in index.ts, I'm throwing an error. This is general error. So if you are throwing a general error, I want to, uh, you can see that the general error that we have, where is it? In index.ts. Okay, this error uh, that is being thrown is not an instance of custom error. So that's why uh, that's why Postman is hanging because it doesn't know what to do with it. So let's see if I return res dot status four hundred and then JSON something bad happened. Let's save and see now. Yeah, something bad happened. But again, um, I returned the string. You, you can see the problem. I returned the string. I forgot. I have to return message of this. Okay. So you can see that I already wrote an inconsistent code while teaching you how to write consistent code. I know it doesn't make sense, but <laughs> you can see that it's something that happens. Uh, let's see. Now you can see that message... Uh, something bad happened, add with 400 bad request, and that is a proof that our application is working fine and our error handling is robust. So that's how you create error handling logic that is scalable, that is reliable and robust, and you write dry and consistent code thanks to the power of abstract classes. If you like this video, press the like button and subscribe to my channel and write me some comments and tell me what kind of content you'd like to see in the future. And also uh, give me some feedback on the current content now. And until then, see you very soon.